Here we go again, eh? All right, now I have an example for you. For this is this is already, uh, th this example is aimed uh, at uh, three different groups, uh, and <clears throat> you personally fall into one of these three groups. Uh, one group is those of you who uh, uh, have had or are taking calculus uh, and would like a, a problem that's a little more mathematic, ma little more mathematically challenging. Uh, the second group is those of you you haven't had calculus, but you did really well and are really comfortable um, in uh, in your algebra and pre-calc classes, and so you're up to the challenge of uh, something a little more mathematical. Uh, and then the th or the third group is those of you who uh, are a little bit uh, uncertain, a little bit weak about your mathematics, and uh, but want to get better at it. And so that's pretty much everybody in the class. Because anybody who's mathematically weak and doesn't care about their math, you didn't sign up for this class. So all of you are awesome. And uh, so this example, in short, is for all of you. And yes, I thought that was funny. Thank you. OK. Um, what do we have? Oh, the, first of all, I just like showing this. So this is how you calculate the electric field of a collection of point charges. Not all electric fields are created by point charges, or at least not. we don't think of them that way. But this is where we are right now. Anyway, and this is the um, definition of all the symbols. Okay, you can pause the recording at any time and stare at that. Uh, but anyway, so here's our next example. So we have two positive charges that are identical to each other, and they are separated by some distance that I'm calling D. And uh, of course, they create an electric field, and they create an electric field that exists everywhere in space, three-dimensional phenomenon. Uh, but the one specific point in space where I want to calculate the field is at a point that's directly above the midpoint between them. And so that's what all of this means. OK, so let's you can if you, if you didn't get all that, again, just pause the recording, read that through, wrap your head around it. But in any case, here comes the step one. Draw a diagram. I am rather emphatic uh, about always drawing a diagram to start with. I've said it before. If you can't see it, you can't solve it. And I hope I sort of uh, really showed clearly how useful that was in the previous example and this one uh, as well. All right. so. So we have, uh, oops, we have a couple of positive charges. OK. So we have a positive charge here. Now, it doesn't tell us their orientation, except it hints at it. We, the place where we want to calculate the field, or the location of our point P, in other words, is going to be above the midpoint of the two charges. So that sounds like maybe we should locate them uh, horizontally. And so our point P is, well, let's see. They are a distance d apart. Okay. You'll notice, annoyingly, there are no numbers in this problem. That's what makes this somewhat more mathematically challenging, or at least one of the things. OK, let's see. So there's that. Uh, and then where, where do we want to calculate the field? At a distance d directly above the midpoint the imaginary line that joins the charges. OK, well, there's the imaginary line. Let's see, yeah. That's the imaginary lines that joins them. Uh, our point P is going to be directly above that. And so I'll say, how about there? Call that, uh, call that point P there, All right? And yeah, directly above the mid midpoint in that distance there, that vertical distance, we're told is distance z. Okay, so we're getting there. We're not done yet. We still have to draw the electric field lines in, field vectors. All right, so let's do that. Pardon me. Uh, okay, so. From the left-hand charge, 
I'm going to draw its field line or field vector, whichever you like, uh, at this point P. We talked about it before. The um, oh, by the way, uh, oh, never mind. The uh, we've talked about it before. The electric field line points away from positive charges and points towards negative charges. Okay, and so and radially away, and so at the point P, its field is going to point like that. Again, there's a huge electric field everywhere in space from, uh, not huge, uh, what I mean is there, there, the electric field of this left-hand charge exists everywhere in space. The only location that I currently care about is that one. So there's lots of field all over the place. I don't care about any of those at the moment right now, only the field at point P. Similarly, the field for the right-hand charge at that same place points radially away. And since we're told the two charges are identical, and because of the geometry of the situation, the distance that the left-hand charge is from the point P has to be the same as the distance that the right-hand charge is from the position P. So these two distances are equal. So the charges are equally far away from the point in question, which mean, and the, the, the charges have equal numbers of coulombs. We're not told a number for that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and therefore it follows automatically that the magnitudes of those two fields must be equal. The directions are not the same, but the magnitudes have to be the same. Okay, so think that through, make sure you're clear on that. All right, and so the total field here is going to be the vector sum, the superposition of these two fields. Well, we know we're going to need them, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in. And uh, that distance there is how far the source charge is from the point C, the left hand source charge, how far the left hand source charge is from the point P, label that R. Now, I could label that, maybe I should label that R1, but I'm not going to for reasons I'll explain in a moment. There's the distance for the other one. I'm also going to call that R, and the reason I'm not going to label them R1 and R2 is because they have to be equal. We argued that a moment ago. Since they are the same numeric value, there's no real reason to give them differing subscripts. Okay? You could if you wanted to and then replace it at the end, but whatever. Let's do it like this. All right, so there's that. And I think that's the entirety of the diagram. Step two, impose a coordinate system on this. All right, so let's see. Let's... Uh, Oh, you can do anything you want, but let's call that the Z direction. And that's the Y direction, same choice that I made uh, in the previous example. And now finally, The goal here is to calculate the total field at point P. It's the sum of this field plus that field. Maybe I should label these. Again, maybe I should call them E1 and E2, but for exactly the same reason as I didn't for the R's, I'm not going to for the E's either. 
The first thing that I notice, and hopefully the first thing you notice, is that if I'm going to add these two vectors up, and they are vectors, uh, by the symmetry of the whole setup, the uh, do you notice the horizontal components, the y components of these fields are going to end up canceling each other? Okay, because the Sorry for that hiccup. Somebody came in the room while I was chatting, so I had to talk with him. Uh, OK, what I was saying was that the horizontal components of these two field vectors uh, end up canceling. And that's because if you take the um, vector components of these things, and I'm going to use a green pen here. And I am aware that um, students can't see green real well, but I'll put it there anyway. So, and the reason why I don't care that you can't really see them is because these two components, as I just said, are going to cancel. They're going to vanish. Now, I'm going to give you a chance to see it. So, these are the horizontal components of the, of the two electric fields. And again, they have to be equal in magnitude because of symmetry. And they necessarily point in opposite directions, as you see. As far as the vertical components, the vertical component of this field is that. The vertical component of this field is also that. So we end up with actually a field, a, a total field that's twice as long as each individual one. And that was a bit of a mess, but hopefully you get the point. Okay, so what we see is that the electric field, the net electric field, is going to point only in the z direction, only in the vertical direction. Okay, and I think I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. And I think actually I'll do it. I'm going to draw it again, but in a slightly different way. having trouble reaching up this high. I'm taller than my wife, but I'm not tall. There's the z-axis. And now what I'm going to do is draw the vertical component of this field out here and the vertical component of this one out there. Right. So this is going to be e, z. This is also going to be e sub z. And so the total field there is going to be twice easy, two times easy. Okay. All right. So what that means in turn is that we're going to have to break these two field vectors into their uh, y and z components, which means we're going to need trig functions. That in turn means that I need an angle. And might as well choose that angle is angle theta, which is going to be equal to that angle by similar triangles or something. And therefore, that's also theta, as is that. Okay. Again, these things are all equal to each other only because of the symmetry, specifically that uh, the, the location of point P is directly above the midpoint between them. If I had chosen any other point, I wouldn't have this kind of symmetry, and the problem would be a lot harder. But I didn't, so it isn't, and so there we are. Okay. So I'm going to have to use trig functions to extract E sub z. And you'll remember, presumptively from physics 114, that since this is since the, this component here, the z component, is the opposite side of this right triangle, we're going to use sine to extract it. Uh, and so that'll be that. OK. So we're ready to go. And I want to point something out to you at this, uh, at this moment. I have been working on this problem for 45 minutes or something, and I, and I have not written down a single equation. And this is going to be standard, and this is how you should be approaching all physics problems. Okay? Hopefully you picked this up, picked up this idea in 114, but let me emphasize it. 
Finding and using an equation is the last step in solving any physics problem. First steps are drawing your diagram, imposing your coordinate system, and then analyzing the damn thing, figuring out what's going on, because what's going on will tell you what equation you need to use. It cannot, it does not and cannot work the other way around. The worst possible strategy that you could choose and use is to go equation hunting. Go try to find an equation that has the same letters as the problem that you uh, have been given. That's known as doing physics by alphabet, and it's a guaranteed D minus. Okay? You've got to understand what's going on physically before you start fiddling with equations, or you'll never get anywhere. Okay? So practice, practice, practice on the concepts here, which, of course, we're going to talk about that in class a lot as well. So take this lesson to heart, please, if you want to do well in the class. And maybe even incidentally learn something about it, too. I know getting a good grade is the first uh, most important goal, but it'd be, great, it'd be great if you learned it, too. Okay, so... So the, uh, where are we? Okay, so the total electric field is going to be only vertical because the horizontal components cancel. The total electric field is going to be two times the Z component of one of the fields. Okay. The Z component is going to be gotten by k q over r squared times, and then we multiply all of this by sine of theta. Okay. Now you might say, oh, okay, hooray, we're done. That wasn't so hard. Well, unfortunately, uh, it's not quite that simple. Uh, because the problem, the original statement of the problem, involved D, it involved Z, and that's it. Nowhere did it mention R, nowhere did it mention theta. Okay? So now this problem that I gave you is entirely symbolic, but suppose I had given you numbers for D, if I had said instead just, you know, uh, one millimeter or something, or, or 0.15 nanometers, or whatever distance I decided. And same thing with D, uh, with Z, give you a number instead of a symbol. Then if I, then you write down R, you don't know what R is. You write down theta, you have no idea what theta is. Okay, so you can't stop there. And so in the same spirit, uh, we're not going to stop. The problem is not going to be over until the expression for the electric field that we have will involve only Z, D, and the various constants. So in short, Q is okay. K is a constant. So we've got to we've got to replace R or R squared with some expression involving only Z and D. And similarly, we've got to replace sine theta with some expression that only involves Z and D. Once that's all done, then the problem is over. Okay. From the diagram. So let's look at R squared first. In the diagram, oh, good. It's a good thing that we drew a diagram. So if we look at R, so we've got a right triangle here or here. Either one doesn't matter which one you like. Okay. This right triangle is so R squared is equal to, that's the hypotenuse, right? R is the hypotenuse. So R squared is equal to this squared plus that squared. Well, this distance here is Z squared. And this distance here, what letter do I want? I'll choose this. This distance here, I hope you see, is E over 2, as is this one. So R squared, it's the square of one side plus the square of the other side. Uh, sorry, the square of one leg of the triangle plus the square of the other leg of the triangle. Right triangle. Okay. Okay. 
as for sine theta, let's see, sine is what? Opposite over hypotenuse, right? So for this theta, but I don't I don't know anything about this theta, but I can figure out theta using this right triangle. So theta is opposite, that's z, divided by hypotenuse, r. Okay. Z over r. So r squared we've got, that involves only z and d in some way. Sine theta, we still have an r there, but that's all right. I'll just take the square root of this expression here. Square root of, uh, actually, do it like this. I'm going to write the square root using an exponent instead of square root for a reason that will become clear in a moment. Okay, so, and there we go. We've replaced sine theta also with an expression involving just z and d. Okay, and now all I have to do is substitute these back and I'm done. See, I told you this would be mathematically more fun. Okay, so e sub z then is equal to k times q over r squared. r squared can be replaced with z squared plus q over 2 quantity squared. Times sine of theta, which is this. I like to put the denominator in the bottom first, uh, just so my fraction lines up nicely. Okay, like that. And that's, in principle, we're done. I'm just going to do one more thing because it'll just make it look prettier. But in principle, we're done. But here's a, a clever thing to notice. You'll notice that uh, the denominators of both fractions is the, are the same except for the exponent, uh, which, you know, maybe like whatever, but watch this. I can raise this to the first power. Wouldn't change anything mathematically, so I could, I could write that as that to the first power, and obviously that doesn't change anything mathematically. Why would I bother? But instead of writing 1 as well, 1, how about if I write, write that exponent 1 as 2 over 2? Why do I do such a weird thing? Because now, aha, look at the stuff inside the square brackets on both of them. They're identical, but now they're raised to these powers. You multiply these two things together, that means you can write just the stuff inside the square brackets and add the exponents. Two halves plus one half is three halves, and multiply the numerators as well, so we get that. And so finally, actually, I'm sorry, we weren't quite done because this is the z component of only one of the fields, but we uh, need the total field, which is the sum of both of those. But now we can add them directly because, as we established earlier, these z components obviously both point in what? The z direction. So I said that was e times, I'm sorry, 2 times the z component of one of the fields. And so, and so we have e at the indicated point p is k times, and this is the way we traditionally write it, 2qz over quantity z squared plus d over 2 quantity squared quantity raised to the 3 halves power, and that's going to point in the 
z direction to the k hat direction, and so that's the answer to the problem. Okay, that's the real nice answer. So I mean, I could just do this and then multiply this whole thing by two without combining the denominators, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't complain other than point out that you could have done this. Okay, but this is kind of the cute way of doing it. So there's that. And so what do I want you to get out of this thing? What do I want you to get out of this example? One, I want you to become comfortable with doing problems purely algebraically, without any numbers at all. Uh, as we get further and further in the course, we're going to be doing this more and more often, because the equations simply become too cumbersome, frankly, for numbers. Okay? And we need to draw general conclusions uh, from the equations and from the expressions, rather than specific numeric values for any given random problem. So start getting comfortable um, with purely algebraic problems and purely algebraic solutions. Second of all, the, the crucial importance of drawing a diagram, you got to draw your diagram. If you don't, you won't get anywhere, I promise you. Okay? And then I, I emphasized it before, I'm emphasizing it again. I spent most of my time analyzing the problem and thinking it through. 80% of the problem was just spent thinking about the physics. 20% was doing the math. Okay? And that's the least important part of the problem. If you get this far, if you write this and stop there and just say, oh, and then you got to multiply by two, well, we, I, I'm happy. Okay? The rest of that stuff is just cute mathematical ni niceness. This is the physics, and this getting up to this point here, from, from the beginning of the problem to the end of the word so, that took me 80% of the time. The rest of this took me 20% of the time. Okay. So spend your time thinking about the physics. The math comes last. All right. Well, uh, there's more things to say about electric fields, and this time it's time to shift gears once again, go back to concepts. And uh, I threatened to do it last time. I didn't do it this time, but I will. Next lecture will be on what in the world is the deal with the direction of the electric field lines, the electric field vectors, and is there more to say about electric field diagram? The answer to both of those is uh, 17. I have no idea what that meant. That was a joke. Okay, see you next lecture.